Hi there, my name's Matt and I'm the blacksmith here at the Pioneer Museum in Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, we're going to be talking about how science and history collide and how um, we can heat steel up and make it into things like nails. We can also take steel and we can harden it and make it into things like knives and axes and other kinds of tools. We're also going to be talking about some of the tools and equipment that blacksmiths used. So depending on how far back in history you go, blacksmiths were responsible for making all kinds of things. If you think about um, the beginning of the American colonies, blacksmiths would have made everything from basically everything in your house that was made of metal other than like a cast iron pan. And so blacksmiths would make things like tools, like knives, like this one. So this is a knife that I forged using a leaf spring from an old truck. This is an example of taking um, a ball peen hammer and making it into a cutting tool that a blacksmith would use to be able to cut their metal. And so blacksmiths were also excellent at making their own tools, which is a real advantage. But they didn't always make things that were tools. Here's a hook you could use for hanging your coat and it's got a leaf on it and it's got a flower um, and so here's an example of a decorative type thing that a blacksmith might also make and then this is a flint and steel striker so this is a tool that can be used to start fire and these were common starting back at the times of the romans all the way through the middle 1850s this is how most people started a fire this is our forge, and the forge is one of the most important parts of the blacksmith shop. This is where we produce the heat that we need to be able to soften the metal and work with it. This example here is a coal forge, and this is an old one. Um, we think it's very possible that this came from the McMillan Ranch, and uh, so this was actually used regularly. Um, and so this, how this forge works is, We've got our fire pot here, which contains a fuel called coal. And for those of you that don't know, coal is a mineral that's mined out of the ground. We're basically burning rocks in this forge. As the coal burns, it puffs up almost like popcorn. And this is the part that produces the most amount of heat. And this forge will get over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit which is 700 degrees hotter than the lava that comes out of a volcano. Um, so it's kind of amazing. It will melt rocks, but it makes a real mess. So usually I don't put rocks in the forge. So how this device works, we've got our coal sitting here in a pile, and then you see this over here. This is our forge blower. And how the forge blower works is it's got gears in here and a fan and there's a 1 to 40 ratio so every time I turn this handle once it's going to spin the fan 40 times and blow air in through the bottom of our forge and that's going to help to get this fire really hot to give it that hot coal and lots of air and so a lot of people ask what are these things down here at the bottom well, coal is a very dirty mineral, and that's part of the reason it's so hard on the environment, is that it's not just pure carbon. There's sulfur, there's um, even silicon like sand and glass and those kinds of things in there. And those things, the impurities, will melt to the bottom. And this tool here is called a clinker breaker, and its job is to break up those clinkers that form in the fire. The clinkers look like this. There are these little puddles of glass and other junk that we've got coming out of that really impure coal. So this tool right here is the anvil and that is one of the also one of the key parts of the blacksmith shop because just about everything you need you can make on this anvil. Let's talk about some of the parts it has. So a lot of people ask about this part. This is called the horn and this is used to make different kinds of round shapes. Whereas this piece here, the face of the anvil is where we're going to shape most of the work that we're doing that's going to be flat. It's got a little hole in here that's square, and that's for holding different kinds of tools, like this cutoff tool that we have here, which is basically a big chisel. 
And so that'll hold that in place for me. This uh, anvil weighs about 100 pounds. So it's pretty heavy and it's going to do um, a lot of work for me. As I come down and strike it with the hammer, the anvil is actually going to act almost like a spring and send some of that energy back. And so my hammer is actually gonna bounce off the face of the anvil. And so as I'm working, it's going to squish the metal from both sides. Okay, so let's talk really quick about our hammer. So this face, as you can imagine, is going to make things pretty flat. Notice that the edges are rounded so it doesn't leave a lot of marks in our work. But this side back here is interesting. It comes to kind of a rounded point. This is called the peen of the hammer. And the peen of the hammer is going to spread metal out away from this peen. So as it pushes on the metal, it's going to squish it out this way. So we use it to make things long. We use it to spread things out, like if we were making the head of an axe and we wanted that axe to fan out. That was, that's something we would use the peen for. All right, now that we've had a chance to talk about some of the main tools that a blacksmith uses, next let's go ahead and fire up the forge. This time today we're going to be using a propane forge for our heat, but it's going to work basically the same way. And let's go ahead and look at the process of how they used to make nails when nails were made by hand. So we're going to take this bar of steel, it's just a round bar, and we're going to forge the end of this into a little tiny square taper to be able to make a square nail. Let me show you how that's done. We're going to take it, we're going to put it in the forge. We're using a propane forge right now, which is kind of a more modern version, but it does the same thing. And the way that I work with the steel is going to be exactly the same as if I was using the coal forge. Side. A little bit like roasting marshmallows. Now, once the metal is hot enough, I'm going to take it out of the fire and take it over to the anvil. I'm going to take my tool that we used to form the head of the nail and we're just going to slide the body in and see how we're doing. So I'd like to make this nail a little bit longer so I go back into the fire. Test it again. Should be able to go a lot further up this time. Okay, so now I can mark where I'm going to cut the nail using the hardy chisel that I showed you before. And I'm going to cut it about there. And so I'm cutting through this bar because we're going to let the nail out of here but I don't want to cut all the way through. I just want to get most of the way through and I'll show you why in a moment. As you would imagine, the little tiny piece on the end that's going to make up our nail is going to be the first part to get too hot in the fire. So I want to heat up the material that's going to make the head of my nail without burning up the material that's going to make the point of the nail that I'm going to drive into the wood. All right. So I'll put that in there. We'll break that off. And now we're going to make the head of our nail. I'm going to cool this 
in the water to make the steel shrink so that I can get it out of the tool. And there, I've made a handmade nail. Well, I hope everyone has had a lot of fun today. Um, and you really should, when you get the chance, come out to the Pioneer Museum because it's a wonderful place to be able to come and see a local history, the history of Flagstaff, this place that we all love. And uh, I've been coming to this museum since I was a little boy and I just love it. It's one of my favorite places. So I hope you had a lot of fun today. I hope you enjoyed learning about some science of blacksmithing and uh, hope to see you at the museum sometime. Mm -hmm.